Hello, my name is Klaus Busse. I'm the head of design for Maserati here at Centro Stile in Torino. And uh, today I want to take a look with you at what defined the design of the MC20. And I thought the best way to do this is with a quick sketch. As you can imagine, uh, any car really, it starts all with the, with the proportion. And the first thing we always draw on, on any car, of course, are the wheels to define uh, the wheelbase, how far the, car, uh, the wheels are spaced. It also helps defining uh, cabin space uh, later on the car. Um, but then what is extremely important is what we call the Y0 line, which is uh, the center line of the car. We call it zero because, uh, or Y0 because the Y helps us define the part of the grid in the three coordinates, Z becoming the height and Y becoming the width. And this line is absolutely important, uh, not only to define the space of the car, uh, or the cabin I should say, and the engine compartment, but it's super important for the aerodynamic because up here is where we have the apex of that line and here is where we have the maximum roof height also for the cabin space, for the passenger and the driver. But very important to, uh, to get this line right together with uh, the guys in aerodynamics to be able to uh, only get away with a fixed spoiler because if we nail the line as we did on this car, you don't need to have a movable spoiler, you can just work with a fixed spoiler. Um, of course, you know, to complete the proportion of the car, you need to know, uh, you know, the DLO as we call it. It's called daylight opening. DLO is kind of a designer term, I guess. And it defines, um, you know, the, uh, the glass area of the car. Uh, of course, back here, we already have uh, the glass for the uh, rear, for the mid engine. Uh, you know, we need rear lights, we have front lights. Um, but what, where it's becoming really interesting is when we uh, talk about the functional aspects of this car. Um, this part up here, and in inside view, this is all you're going to see, defines the intercooler opening um, that supply, supplies all the cooling for the mid-engine uh, in the back. So what you see here in the side view is it's barely noticeable. And what is very important for us is that we didn't want to do what we see so much in the in the competitive segment is that uh, the car is almost designed around air intakes. For us it was important that we have a minimum amount of uh, graphical details and really focus on the sculpture of the car. And the sculpture of the car is pretty much happening in the upper part of the car, you know. Uh, we, we, we define reflections, bone lines, and they help us to really create almost like this Italian sculpture in the upper part of the car. I'm going to draw a quick section here so you get an idea. So it's a very, very round, very beautiful uh, surface. But that surface then on the, on the lower part of the car meets basically its, uh, its opposite, which is uh, like raw engineering surfaces. What I mean with that is all this down here is carbon fiber and all this is designed to extract air from the front wheel and to bring in air for the rear wheel. So this is a super functional area, very much led by aerodynamics, very much designed on the computer. So we're bringing these two worlds together, the upper part almost being hand sculpted, very, very voluptuous Italian design, if you want to say so. And on the bottom, we bring in uh, these kind of raw engineering surfaces uh, that really define the functionality and the performance of the car. The same is true also for the back, uh, because uh, this point right here defines the end of the, uh, of the ground effect floor. So again, all this is carbon fiber, and again, super important for uh, the aerodynamics. On the front, similar situation, of course, a lot of aerodynamic devices down here, uh, and, and also beautifully bringing together the lower uh, engineering part of the car with that upper part of the car, the sculpture. Uh, to get away um, with this kind of pure approach to design and to avoid this kind of distraction of unnecessary graphic, unnecessary air intakes, we focused on a few very iconic elements to give this car character, whether it's the trident on that typical uh, triangular uh, C-post, but also the wheels. Uh, for the wheels, we were looking into our archives and, and really discussed and studied which, which wheels in the past we used really stand for Maserati and iconic and can only be used for this brand. And we came up with um, these, these Trident wheels that basically are a stylized form of the Trident. You see those three peaks here. And so we designed this, this uh, three-spoke wheel 
uh, designed by, or inspired, I should say, inspired by wheels of the past out of the Gran Turismo portfolio, or also used on the, uh, on the very beautiful birdcage concept that was uh, done uh, quite a while ago. And the same, of course, is true for the front wheel. Again, these very, very beautiful, iconic wheels. And you can see, I can sketch them very quick because, you know, they're very, very clear in design with these uh, repeating uh, tried and feel. So let's take a look at the uh, front of the MC20 and uh, what makes it unique, what went through our head when we uh, designed uh, this very, very important part of the car, as you can imagine. Um, to no surprise, you find uh, what would be called a grille in the front part of the car. I prefer the term frame because it really is there to frame what I think is one of the most iconic element in the automotive industry, which is the uh, Trident, the Tridente, the Maserati Tridente. And so the frame is really helping us to create attention around this very important icon for us. Um, the overall proportion, of course, are very much driven by uh, the fact that we have a super sports car, so very low. The car is just a touch over 120 tall. Um, that allows us to get a really nice uh, cabin space. But I want to highlight a quick thing here on the front because like um, the side, it's all about reducing noise, avoiding distraction. Because all I want you to take away is the beautiful proportion of the car and the Maserati Tridente and this frame. So what you see here on the, uh, you know, as soon as you go uh, outboard of the Trident, of course we have big air intakes for those massive intercoolers that help uh, cooling down the system. But other than that, we keep it very, very calm. Uh, also, the, the car itself, the, the body of the car is following that recipe that we spoke about on the, on the uh, side of the car, meaning that the upper part of the car, you know, I'm going to draw a section through here, is a very, very clean hand sculpted area. And then the lower part, you again have this very, very raw engineering surfaces, you know, exposing this beautiful carbon fiber that you then see connecting with the carbon fiber part of uh, the side of the vehicle, and then also eventually on the rear. Now this section that I was just drawing here is basically driven by a, a very simple fact. We needed to get air out of uh, you know, the grill compartment to help the, with the flow of the intercooler. So what we did is we scooped out these, um, these elements here and they define they're creating this really cool element that then helps flow into the body of the car. Um, but really uh, keeping it to a minimum in terms of uh, adding openings to the car, really only what was the minimum required. But it does add some interesting shape to the hood. It also then connects us with the, with the wheel arches. You see here our wheel arches, where they peak, they are a little bit flat. Uh, often what you see is uh, like very trapezoidal, very uh, uh, wheel arches with a strong peak. And what we like to do at Maserati to keep them more constructed looking, and that connects us also with some of the great Maserati sports cars of the past, like the MC12, but also the birdcage concept that we have shown in years past. So let's take a look at uh, the rear end of the car, uh, the car you probably see, uh, the part of the car you probably see most when you're in traffic. Um, this car is incredibly proportioned, um, which of course is a dream for us designers. It is uh, about two meters wide, 195 to be precise, uh, without mirrors. So with the mirrors, it actually goes beyond two meters. And that allows us to create this beautiful stance, this dramatic proportion on the road. But to further emphasize it, we actually used the uh, rear lights and made them super slim using really state-of-the-art technology. And using this graphic element further enhances the width of the car on the road. So you're physically wide already, but on top of that, you get uh, the graphic impact of the lights to really create this amazing uh, stance of the car. Now, uh, here in the rear view, again, I want to revisit those sections we talked about on the front view. This unusual but very typical for Maserati uh, sections for the wheel arch. Not the uh, typical peak that you get on a lot of cars, but something uh, that is more Maserati. You, you, you know this section probably already from the MC12, uh, the spiritual predecessor of this car, but also from the uh, birdcage concept. 
Um, as you can imagine, the rear is all about the business part of the car. Uh, so here we are taking that veil, that cloth, the, the upper part of the car, uh, which is this kind of beautiful sculpted part, uh, we take it, we lift it even further and really expose the business part of the car. This down here is all about engineering a performance, whether it is, uh, you know, dramatic cooling elements, whether it is those uh, massive exhaust pipes, uh, it all is about functionality in this area of the car. Down here, of course, we have uh, the arrival point of the uh, ground effect floor. So this is, again, a very super important part of the car. In all these areas, um, actually more designed by engineers than by us at Centro Stile. And that was okay because we really appreciated this collaboration with the engineers on this functional part of the car. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna shade it slightly so you can see uh, this is all gonna be in carbon fiber uh, on the car. And it's gonna give it a really, really dr dramatic uh, look. Now, another cool uh, feature on this car is, uh, you know, I'm just gonna put in the engine cover here, the, the roof line. Um, one quick thing maybe, uh, what is cool is this car also has an additional rear view camera, it's about in this position here, and that will feed an additional image on the rear view camera inside the cabin, and it will provide you with an unobstructed view of the rear of the car, what's behind you. And that allows us in, in return to be more free with uh, the elements we had to use on the, on the, on the cover because we needed to add a couple of elements to help uh, with air circulation and to help airflow. So what we were able to do, we, we did a stylized uh, trident uh, for these uh, cooling elements. And that was a really cool feature because at the beginning we were very concerned about um, these cooling slots we needed to use because it made us, uh, it felt like something we had seen before when there were just simple lines. But then the breakthrough really came when we I, I realized the idea that we can do a stylized trident uh, using these slots. So it's a really abstract way to introduce the Maserati trident on the, on the rear of the car. And as a matter of fact, there's no additional trident on the rear of the car, just the uh, very familiar uh, Maserati script on the, on the edge of the car. So I really like ending on the rear view of the car because it really shows these two worlds coming together, these, the design world, the sculpture world, and the raw engineering world. And it also represents the two teams that together develop this car, whether it is the team of designers, interior, exterior, sculptors at Centro Stile, of which I am only one of many, but also this magnificent team of engineers and Modena. And together we were able to create the MC20 in perfect respect and in a perfect symbiosis.